All right, here's my design that I came up with. I had another design that I drew out, but I, in the process of making my example, I came up with these feet that I really liked the shape of. It kind of reminds me of a crab claw or one of those claws for the mechanical uh, where you grab the toys. But anyway, uh, that shape spoke to me, so I'm going to use it as kind of the building block for my whole design, and there it is. But I don't know exactly how I'm going to color it. So I'm going to do a time lapse of me coloring a couple different examples and seeing which one I like best. Um, I chose teal, or they call it teal next time, <laughs> and cottontail, which is just white. And so I, and then rust, the, co the color of the clay is going to be kind of this color. And so I'm going to choose to rotate those colors in thirds. I went ahead and divided it in thirds so I can do three different plans. I just think planning is important uh, rather than just diving in. And I'm using separate colors for a couple reasons. Number one, it'll be more interesting. And number two, it'll be easier for me to paint my design and know where I need to carve my outlines uh, when I'm going back in to do this graffito. All right, so I did the three different versions and I even, in this one, I decided I would try either carving out the center or carving out the edges. I don't know which way I'm gonna go if I choose this one. Um, so I guess, let's see how what you guys think. I'm gonna go A, B, C, um, which, and then, so I'm gonna ask you to vote here in a second and tell me which one you think I should go with. And we'll see if we can come to a consensus or at least see uh, if I chose the one that the majority of you like. All right, I chose B, I think, for a couple reasons. Number one, the rust represents the clay. And so I'm worried if I'm painting in these designs and leaving that much clay. When I try to clean it up, all my smoothing is gonna get screwed up and I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time smoothing it out. Um, so that's the reason I eliminated this one. Uh, this one's just too much white for me. I feel like if I have a chance to add color to it, I'm going to wanna do that. And I, um, was thinking, I think I'm gonna put white in the middle, uh, like on the inside, so that when I'm cleaning it and washing it, it'll be easier to tell if it's clean or not. I mean, I have dark dishes at, at home and I can tell if they're clean or not, but I just, I don't know why, but that's popping into my head. So I think I'm gonna put the white on the inside, which means I'm gonna go with B and um, use mostly that uh, teal next time gonna love a pun and um, do this design I had don't know which direction I'm gonna go with these and I could do the same thing with these I'm kind of liking this one I like the white outline but that means I'm gonna have to paint a lot more precisely the nice thing about being able to carve the lines is that I can um, clean up any screw-ups that I have with um, the painting job with the paint job by carving those lines. So this one is gonna require a lot more care in painting. There's a couple other technical things that I didn't explain or show you guys when uh, that I prepped in before I did the video. So number one, we have these embossers, which they have these little tiny rounded, uh, it's, it's a little sphere on the end of what would look like a needle tool and there's different sizes. And I went ahead and I went over the lines. Um, I drew them on there with a pencil initially because graphite will burn off in the kiln. But um, just so that in case when I'm painting, the lines get disguised a little bit, I went over them with these embossers just to make it a little bit of an indention. You don't have to do that, but it'll help you um, see the lines if 
uh, you're having trouble at some point. Looks like I forgot to do this because that's just pencil line. But um, that is available for you. I'm just going to have palettes. So that's what I'm going to uh, demonstrate for you guys. And this is nice because we're not going to waste because all you can fill up is this. Well, I mean, you could fill up multiples, but that's a waste. So just fill one at a time and then go back and get more paint uh, or underglaze if you need it. Glaze, I guess, technically is what we're using. And um, we're going to try it out this year. We've never done it before. So, um, And then also, I have these sharp edges on my design, like on these things. And this is three-dimensional. And I didn't want it to be able to gouge my furniture when I get it home. So I sloped it so that the point actually comes down and meets the surface of the bowl so that I don't end up damaging my um, furniture. So here is uh, my design already sketched onto here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just get a little bit of uh, the main color that I'm going to paint. I'm just going to paint um, blue first or the teal first. So I'm just getting that out so the white's not drying. And then um, during the time lapse, you'll see me pour some white. And then while I'm waiting for the blue to dry, I'm going to carefully um, go ahead and paint the white in while the blue's drying. However, you have to be extremely careful. And so while I'm painting, I'm going to start kind of in a circle. So I'm going to go back when I start with the white, I'm going to go back to the beginning where I started because that's dry and less likely to mix in with my white. Um, it could look really bad if you get wet blue on your brush when you're, or the wet teal or mine in my case and get it in the white. Um, so it's better to take your time and let it completely dry, or you can do all the teal first, let it completely dry and then go back to the white. You know how, uh, your craftsmanship's been so far this year. So you can kind of adjust your approach to that. If you're messy normally, then only do one color at a time. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to switch over to time lapse again so you guys don't have to watch um, me decorate in real time. All right, small break in the time lapse. I wanted to show you that um, in some areas, number one, that I am a little bit messy. I can go back in after I've painted all three layers and uh, or actually I think you can do two or three with this, but I think I'm gonna go for three just to make sure it's opaque. And then number two, I almost finished my bowl, um, at least the first layer with just a little cup of the um, palette. So. It does, you're not gonna to use tons of glaze. And the more we save on this project, the more we'll have left over for the next one, which is going to be a coffee cup. So um, try to think about conserving the uh, glaze without skimping on, you know, do at least two layers. Because if you do one, it's gonna be see-through and kind of ugly. Um, two, most likely would be opaque. Three, definitely will. All right, I'm gonna go back to time-lapse. All right, oh, I just finished the first layer. Hopefully you're also noticing that I'm going back and I'm dipping my brush fairly often. I'm not trying to smooth or spread this out so thin that it's not gonna even be considered a coat. Um, also, hopefully you can see in the video, I can't tell if you can or not, the lighter areas where it's kind of like powdery looking now and um, a much lighter color than where it's wet, that that's the dry area. And so you can tell where it's dry and where it's not uh, based on that. And if you can't see it in the video, you'll definitely be able to see it in real life. It um, doesn't have a shine to it anymore because it's no longer wet. And it has um, a much more powdery and light look to it. All right, hopefully I can do the next three layers um, in full time lapse. All right, I talked a big game about how I was gonna do the white. 
while the blue dried. However, I just, I, I realized pretty early on that my craftsmanship or how carefully I was painting uh, was lacking. And so I decided I'm just gonna do the blue and let the, or the teal and let the teal completely dry before I do the white. I also realized that I wasn't thinking about the technical aspects of this. I need to leave these unglazed so they don't stick to the shelf because glaze is essentially a mixture of minerals that turns into glass. And so if I have molten glass on these and these are the only things touching the shelf, when that cools, it's going to fuse it to the shelf and I'm gonna have to break my bowl to get it off. So these have to stay unpainted. So I'm gonna flip my design and I'm gonna do rust here and then white here and then rust here. Um, I'm just gonna alternate. That's why I spaced those out so that I didn't have white and right next to white and white right next to each other in my design. <clears throat> but I'm just gonna flip it. I'm gonna have rust, white on the bigger one, and then rust out here as the prim the primary color at least. Um, that's it. I'm not gonna make you watch the third layer, but I am gonna do a third layer and then. Uh, I'll probably show you a little bit on how I'm gonna clean up the, or scrape it before I do the white. And then um, that'll be the end of the video. You guys are amazing. Thank you for your patience. All right, all three layers have been applied and things are dry. So now I'm gonna go in and scratch away some of these imperfections. You can see that there's a point um, on this side and it's almost completely gone over here. The glaze claims that you can go over it with another color and it'll be opaque where you won't see the other color underneath it. But I'm a little nervous and skeptical of, cause I've never, we've never used these before at, uh, for this assignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and be on the safe side and I'm gonna scrape away some of that. And you can use any tool that will do the trick. So any of these ribbon cutters, would be great. And you just want to scrape back to the clay. Or I can use the X-Acto knife if I'm really careful and just ever so slightly scratch back through until I get the clay showing again. This is gouging a little bit more than I'd like. But now you can kind of see both of the points. And I'll probably go back in with some of the tools and smooth this out and burnish it. I brought some of my personal tools in today to make sure that I had everything that I needed. And then um, after I've gotten all this stuff cleaned up, I can go back in and paint the white. And I went ahead and got a few smaller brushes too to make sure that I can get in where I need to get. But if you don't have smaller brushes, um, you could dip. Oh, I don't know, let's see. You could use, really clean up a blade and you could dip it and paint and kind of lay it in there and and uh, ta you know, tap and, and get the color in that way, or uh, one of the needle tools maybe, though there's only a couple of those, so I'm a little leery about telling you guys to use that. Um, side of a pencil, if it's your pencil, not one of mine, but you could, uh, if you need a point, you could like dip it in the uh, glaze and then apply it that way. Uh, get creative for whatever you need to do to get yours done. The other thing I'm gonna do is make sure that the side of my feet here are cleaned up. I'm gonna use the X-Acto knife and just trim away all any glaze that got on there because I want it to be a really precise, uh, clean edge where those are, or, or where the, the turquoise and the foot meets. So, I'm gonna make sure that that's nice and clean. But, Anyway, once you've got uh, all of your areas that you don't want to have 
the color that you just applied the first, or the first color you applied, then you can go ahead and apply your second color. You don't have to use a second color, but I really strongly would encourage it. It's gonna look way more professional and way better if we do two colors uh, at least, but I wouldn't go crazy and try to do 27 colors because it'll just look like a unicorn threw up on your bowl and that'll be no bueno. Um, the other thing that we need to be aware of is you need to have some areas that are scraped away because um, clay, when it fires the first time, off gases. Any organic material that's mixed in with it or any other things that are in there that need to burn off um, do so on that first firing. And so since we're doing the glaze on the first, before it's ever fired, normally you would bisque fire it, glaze it, and fire it again. But to save time and... Um, uh, speed things up, we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and glaze directly on the clay, which this glaze uh, can do. It's not all glazes can, but um, this one works that way. But the other thing that you need to be cautious of is we have to scratch through in some areas so that the gas that's trying to go away um, has a way to escape instead of going through the glaze and creating little bubbles and pinholes that you see through the glaze. So, um, I think that's it. Oh, one last thing. Um, your design, I went ahead, and, or the, sorry, your, the glazes you chose. I went ahead and wrote down the code number just instead of writing down the whole name. I just wrote SC16 because Cottontail is one of our whites, but we also have Anti-Glace and a bunch of others that have different names. And when you come back, especially if you're gone for a couple days, you might forget. And so I'm writing down the code for each of the the uh, colors that I used so that I don't forget. Have fun glazing. Why are you still watching? Hurry up and glaze. Actually, if you uh, want to watch me continue to glaze, I'm going to do another time lapse of the white and uh, let you guys watch if you're curious. But otherwise, start decorating your bowl and uh, can't wait to see them. Bye.